Dear brothers and sisters, a common sentiment that we may feel when there is a global climate of unraveling fitna, of trials and tribulation, even technologies that can also be a tribulation that we don't yet know how to get a grasp of, coupled with our own personal struggle and what is generally an observable decline in human happiness that people are less equipped than ever to deal with their own personal strife, with their own personal stress, and the overexposure to bad news that is around us. You literally cannot scroll any social media platform or change the channel on any TV or any set, except that you're going to see tribulation after tribulation after tribulation. And you will notice that as you look through the tribulations that face the Prophet ﷺ and the generation of the companions, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the nature of the tribulation, yet the nature of their certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was one and it was able to carry them through. Now I wanted to actually fast forward and I want to actually go towards the very end of time and work backwards. And the Prophet ﷺ said something very interesting about the time right before Al Masih al Dajjal appears. So the Prophet ﷺ tells us something very interesting that before the appearance of Al Dajjal, there is a certain desperation that precedes them. See, when people are desperate, then they're more vulnerable and they can be exploited. And that's a dangerous combination. But the stars of this Ummah shine in its most difficult times. He said وسلم, that three years before Al Dajjal appears, there will be complete drought, a severe drought that strikes the people. And people will be struck with severe hunger. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the first of those three years, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will command the skies to hold one third of its rain and the earth to hold one third of its produce. A decline in what comes from the heavens and a decline in what's produced from the earth by one third. Then he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the second year, Allah Azza will command it to hold two thirds. Two thirds of the rain will be held, two thirds of the produce will be held. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the third year, Allah Azza will withhold the rain so not a single drop of rain will fall for an entire year. And the earth will completely withhold its produce. Can you imagine a year of global drought? What happens when Allah withholds? Okay, as advanced as you want to get, create all the technologies that you can, all by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if Allah holds back the water from you, what are you going to do? And so this humbles mankind across the board when Allah commands for a whole year that water does not fall from the sky, rain does not fall from the sky. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all of the hooved animals, meaning the sheep, the cattle, the pigs, the deer, all of the hooved animals will die, except for a few that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to survive. So where do you even get your meat from now? So you don't have food, you don't have your drink. And the Prophet sallallahu was asked by the companions as he was narrating this, Ya Rasulullah, how will people live in that time? How will people survive? And this is a powerful, response that the Prophet ﷺ gives. He says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La ilaha illallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that in that time, your tasbih will take the place of your food. Think about this. You could feel a sense of suffocation. And Allah teaches you another lesson, that if Allah Azza wants you to be sustained, even physically, by Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah Azza wa Jal will make that happen. Even if you don't have water. When Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala wants to change the way that you operate as a human being, so that He can sustain you, He will sustain you with dhikr. He'll sustain you with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And when you talk about people literally feeling a sense of suffocation, and Allah turning their dhikr into breathing. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Dhikr is what settles the heart and gives you tranquility in a way that nothing else can. If you feel yourself suffocating, if you feel the constriction of the chest, if you feel like you can't move, you can't operate due to the global circumstances or due to the circumstances in your own home. When you turn away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things become constricted, tight. But dhikr opens the pathways. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the pathways so much so that that in the worst of times to strike mankind, dhikr will literally be your food and your drink. SubhanAllah. And remembering Allah does not simply mean repetition on the tongue. 
Remembering who Allah is as you remember him with your tongue and thinking deeply about what you're saying when you remember him with your tongue and then allowing that to penetrate your heart when you remember him with your tongue. That opens the pathways. It allows you to breathe, to not suffocate when things are happening. Alhamdulillah, Allah is in control. Now I want you to think about this. The Prophet ﷺ taught us about how difficult the last times are, how difficult the end of times are. But he put this opportunity ahead of us, alayhi salatu wassalam. He said that those people that will be with Isa alayhi salam are the best of this ummah, right next to the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There is an opportunity to rise. Even in the most difficult of times that will strike this earth, there is an opportunity to rise to be amongst the most favorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentions the increase in the challenge, he mentions the increase in the opportunity. What comes after you, O companions, are days that require great patience. That patience in those days is like holding on to a burning hot coal. But the one who acts in those days has the ajr of 50, has the reward of 50 people. 50 of them, Ya Rasulullah? No, 50 of you. So as the challenge rises, the opportunity to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises as well. Dear brothers and sisters, when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances and when the global challenges around us become so difficult, when we find our personal stress as well growing, remember to do the good that you know how to do, to speak the truth that you know how to speak, to avoid the falsehood that you know is falsehood, and to avoid acting in confusion and uncertainty. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all along and ground yourself in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in the remembrance of Allah we have clarity and in the remembrance of Allah we have a course of action and in the remembrance of Allah we have a special place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter.